beware of struggle-based gospel. Because it's not the point. It's not the point. The point is faith working through love. Faith working through love. So I wanted to set the context around our discussion today. Faith activated by love. Faith energized by love. Faith expressed by love. Faith operating by love. So the principle we're working with is that love is the force behind our faith. And think of, think of a set of scales. Think of a set of scales because love, faith is a fight and love is a challenge. And you need one to balance out the other. Got a whole bunch of brawlers. People just want to fight, fight, fight. I'm fighting by faith, by faith, by <laughs> fight, 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 fight by faith, fight by faith. But then we don't even it out or soften it up with love. Faith is a fight. Love is a challenge. Y'all ready to dig? It's gonna be better. <laughs> Verses 2 through 5, our emphasis here is verse 3. And 
he is opening in this letter to the church there, and he says, you know, I'm, I always pray for you all, and I remember you all before the Lord for three reasons. For your work of faith. Faith is a fight, and faith is a work. And your labor of love. Love is a challenge, it is a process, it is a labor. Amen, everybody. And so, and the third reason is for their steadiness of hope. That's why he goes before the Lord on their behalf. And he prays knowing that these saints are chosen because the gospel was fruitful in them. So let's look quickly at the work of faith. The work of faith. Work here is the employment of faith, putting our faith to work. The business of faith is any deed done in faith. And faith here, and this is the working definition over all of these references in the discipleship uh, model, and that is any conviction of the truth. The definition of faith across all of these scripture references is the, uh, the conviction of the truth. And here's where we see how love is how love is the force behind faith. Because he says, I remember your labor of love. And so faith as a work without love is just a labor. Okay? Faith as a work without love is just a labor. And what is the definition of labor? Labor is the beating of the chest. It's, it's sorrow. It's the grief of the work. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. It's the grief of the work. It is intense work with trouble and with toil. It is the plowing. It's the soreness. It's the, the things that we feel as a result of the work of faith. Faith is a fight. And in a fight, we sustain injuries. Wow. And so we need love to temper the beating. And so labor, and here's why it's interesting, because it's a labor without, a labor without love causes us to focus on the grief of the work, causes us to focus on the struggle, the, struggle, the sorrow, the trouble, because labor in and of itself is selfish. Help, 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 help. So Paul distinguishes it as a labor of love. And so across these references, faith is the conviction of truth, but love is benevolence, brotherly love, goodwill. It is others focused. Others focused. And so these things are, are noteworthy because if we're going to fight the fight of faith, we have to show God at some point, this is my faith. That's what makes it a work of faith. That at some point I have to show him, I'm doing this to show you I'm believing you and I'm relying on you and I'm putting all my eggs in your basket. That's why it, we call it a work. And it's a fight to stay consistent with that because there's the battle of the mind, there's the battle of the flesh, there's the battle of the will. It's all working against us and we're building resistance. And it causes us, without love, to get up and say, well, you know, I'm just, I'm just believing God. I'm going through. I'm going through believing God. And so we know it's a work of faith because we do it out of a commitment to the truth. Don't miss it. We don't commit to the work. We commit to the truth that called us to the work. Why we get caught up, we get too caught up in the labor and in the work or in the fight alone, we have to repeat our first works. Because we have to come back to a place in our heart where we realize we committed to the truth that called us to the work. Oh, that's good. So we know our but we should wear the breastplate of faith and love. Of course, my mind went straight to the armor, the armor of God, that, and we know we have a breastplate of righteousness. Uh, we don't, we're not changing breastplates. You know, it's in the uniform changing. 
You know, but this is uh, an expanded definition that we have a breastplate of faith and love. By definition, the breastplate is a two-part protection for the body, front and back, from the neck to the navel, where the ribs end. Neck to navel, where the ribs end. And remember, our definitions of faith and love carry over. Conviction of the truth, and then benevolence, brotherly love, goodwill. And so the principle here is that love is the force of faith. That love and faith cover the tender parts. And so it is protection for production. Protection for production. Why do I say that? Guard your heart for out of it flows the issues of life. In the belly is where living waters flow from. You know, that's where the womb is. That's where things are created and incubated and not released until the set time. And so the breastplate of faith and love protects those things until it's time to produce those things. 